Hi everyone, Patty Alaka back with some more coping strategies. I hope that you're doing well today. Um, I, I want to start off by answering some questions um, that people have had. One is um, what came in was um, questioning um, why I share my feelings, my personal feelings. Um, I have to say that the Lord put on my heart long, long time ago, actually when my kids were babies and they're uh, adult men now, that um, that he, he wants me to um, help people by living in the valley, living in the desert, um, not to be in this place of kind of being on the mountaintop, having already handled everything in life, and from this place of superiority to point my finger and say, well, this is how I did it. That's how you should do it kind of thing. Um, I kind of joke a little bit when I say that, but really, um, I have really felt very passionate and very profoundly that the Lord has wanted me to be on the mission field, uh, to be with everyone. Um, sometimes, you know, as a therapist, you know, people get a little uh, frightened that, therapists are going to psychoanalyze and that somehow they know better than others. And the truth of the matter is we're all human beings. We are all doing the best we can in this human condition. Um, and so I really believe, honestly, the older I get, um, you know, that saying, the more that I know, the more I realize how much I don't know. So I'm right here with you. Um, I don't ever want to come across like I know better because I certainly don't. I'm doing the best that I can with what I have each and every moment. And when I know better, I do better. Um, I share with you all the things that have helped me through the years um, and all the trainings that I've gone through. I've used with clients. As I've mentioned, I am a therapist. I am a nurse. I've been practicing as a therapist well over 25 years and a nurse even longer than that. So um, I offer these tools as a way to help you heal. I believe that we're never completely uh, perfect. Um, only the Lord Jesus was perfect. Um, he walked around this world perfect. Um, but we the rest of humanity is not perfect. We're imperfect and that's okay. We're not expected to be perfect. So we're given opportunity to opportunities to grow and be the best version of we possibly can be every moment throughout every day. So these are just tools that I offer. Um, another question that came in is which tool should I use? Really, I like to look at it as each time that I do a video, I'm offering to you more tools to put in your toolbox so that when you need to um, heal, when you want to work through something and you're having a challenge doing that, you can look in your toolbox and find those tools that work for you. Um, I know for me that there's certain go-to tools that work for me. Um, I tend to tap a lot. Um, I've mentioned that in a previous video. I also do EMDR a lot. Um, I pray a lot. You know, obviously I pray a lot. I'm a Christian. Um, and I read the Bible a lot. I do a lot of uh, a lot of self help, um, but I don't just um, I want to say I don't know better than you, you know. And if you have any ideas, I would love to hear from you. Um, I kind of feel like this is kind of an exchange between us. Um, but I want you to know that um, I am transparent because I want you to know how real I am. It's a way to uh, for me to practice. Um, just being fully present with you, uh, being mindful, and um, also role modeling um, how to be in this world in terms of your own ways of being mindful and present and um, taking off masks when, um, when you can, realizing that you may have a mask on when you need a little bit more protection. Um, but it's just you know, we're all just human beings having a human experience. So um, I I think that's the long answer to the question is, you know, why do I share my feelings? I just really want you to know that I'm on, I'm not on that mountaintop pointing my finger telling you how to do it. I am in the trenches with you. I am in the desert. I am in the dirt. I am on my knees um, praying with the Lord right beside you um, and asking him to heal me 
and asking him to heal you. Um, so without further ado, why don't we go into prayer as the Lord um, always suggests that we pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for being here with us, being with me and being with whoever is that's watching this video today. I ask that you heal all of us physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and relationally, Lord. Um, I ask that you teach us what it is that you would like us to know. Not my words today, Lord. Not my will, Lord. Your words and your will, Lord. Um, you're the Alpha. You're the Omega. You're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you, Lord. Help us to remember um, your grace, your mercy, your peace, and that you go before us um, through all our challenges. You go before us. You part that Red Sea. Uh, you fight our battles. Um, you are there with us through it all. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I hope you're doing well today. Um, and if you're not, um, that's okay too. I'm glad that you're tuning in. Um, today, I feel like the Lord put on my heart to speak about DBT. And DBT is um, an acronym for uh, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. Therapy, Excuse me, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy. Um, it, it's a really awesome uh, therapy model that was created by Marsha Linehan in the 1980s. Her story is amazing. Uh, she was born and raised as a Christian and she was a very thriving woman. And then all of a sudden when she was um, a teenager in her senior year in high school, she just fell apart. Um, and so she went to see a psychiatrist and long story short, she wound up in um, a psychiatric hospital for a little over two years. And the therapy at that time, um, she's 77 now, so I'm guessing it was the early 60s when she was going through this process. Um, the therapy at that time, the therapy that she received, um, the medications that she received, it actually just wound up making her so much worse, unfortunately. And she, um, she went through an awful experience and she made a vow to God while she was in the psychiatric hospital uh, when she was 18, 19 years old, that one day, if she was able to get out of the psychiatric hospital, that she was going to help others heal. So what she wound up doing was she, she was discharged and she went to night school. She worked full time. She went to school at night. Um, she got her PhD in clinical um, psychology, and she created this amazing theory of therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, that does exactly what she made the vow to God that that does. Um, she, uh, this, this is a form of therapy that is um, for those really hard to treat clients. Um, there are times uh, where clients are very, very sensitive um, you know, uh, it, not to put anyone in a category, but th they, um, they struggle so much more than the average person. Um, they have heightened sensitivities. Um, these are clients that, um, are in very high risk categories that, um, have attempted suicide often, um, that have cut, um, high addictions, uh, you know, a lot of really heavy duty emotions that they're feeling in their body that to even process their emotions, it's really, really challenging. So she came up with this form of therapy to help those clients in particular. And guess what? It has. If you do the research, it's amazing. These This population of clients is doing so well because of this form of therapy. Um, and I just want to you know, put out a little bit of a disclaimer that if you are going through a challenging time, I strongly re uh, recommend that you reach out to um, a therapist, reach out to a psychologist, reach out to your doctor, uh, call the emergency room, um, but get the help that you need so that you can live um, a life that is worth living. So, um, so Marsha Linehan, 
uh, in her theory, she came up with four parts really that are very powerful. Um, the first is acceptance. And some of this may uh, sound familiar because it overlaps a little bit. If you've been watching my videos, uh, some of it overlaps. So there's really four parts to her model. Uh, the first part is acceptance. Um, just really accepting what is in your life. You know, we sometimes we go through a really hard time, we're dealt a really bad hand, but if we can accept what's happening, that can really help. And at the same time, the second part is to make changes. Slowly, little by little, making changes. Um, so those are the two main categories. Under acceptance, um, she has mindfulness, and as we've talked about in the past, mindfulness um, is really helpful with the prefrontal cortex, so we pretend that this is your brain, the front, very front part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex. Mindfulness, just being aware, being in the moment, um, using your five senses to be there, but being fully present, getting out of your head, getting more into your body. Um, that's really mindfulness. And the second part of the acceptance category is distress tolerance. She works a lot with helping clients to tolerate their distress. Um, and, you know, what I like to think about in terms of this model is there are times when we can focus on our emotions, but sometimes those emotions are so overwhelming that the last thing in the world we want to do is focus on our emotions. So this is kind of like going in the back door. And um, what she does is she really recommends focusing on the behavior, and then the behavior will help to change the emotion. Uh, so some examples of that might be, uh, if you were to right now, just smile. And let's say you're going through a really hard time, just make an intention that that day, you're going to smile all day. Um, not, and not so much for the person that you're going to interact with, but more um, for your own self. If you notice when you smile, your inside starts to feel happier, your emotions start to feel happy. Everything is connected. So that would just be an example of an outer behavior of smiling could actually help my inner feel a little bit more peaceful, a little bit more uplifted. Um, another example might be, um, you know, just putting our hands out, kind of like helping hands. If you have this posture, often um, we wind up being more present. Uh, we, we want to help. We want to serve. I know that when I pray, you probably have seen me pray. This is the praying hands model for me. And my hands just always go here because I'm just so ready for the Lord to just fill me um, and to just offer who I am to him. But when you open up your hands, um, that's just an outer behavior that can totally change your inner posture. So uh, the second part of her model is uh, the making changes. And that's it, stuff we've talked about in the past too, emotional regulation. It's really important that um, you find ways to regulate your emotion. Um, but before you regulate your emotion, it's important that you notice that your emotion may need to be regulated. So if you find that you're angry or scared or sad, um, and you're having intense emotions, what is it that you can do? Ask yourself, what is it that you can do? Look in your toolbox. What is it that you can do to help to regulate that emotion? Um, and the fourth part is interpersonal effectiveness, which really is um, when we connect with other people. Um, it's always so challenging when you think about it, right? We are such complex people. So we have all our stuff going on mind, body, spirit. I've mentioned I am a therapist, I am a nurse, and I practice physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So when you look at it, what's going on with yourself physically? What's going on with yourself emotionally? What's going on with yourself mentally and spiritually? So complex. And when you are interacting with another person, guess what? They have all their stuff going on too, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And then you bring the two together and if, as long as everyone is above a five, as I've talked about in the past, it can be a really great conversation. But if everybody is not above a five, ooh, what's going to happen? What gets triggered in each? 
Um, I'm just thinking about uh, a dinner I had with an old friend last week. Um, was really looking forward to getting together with this friend. Hadn't seen this friend for a while. And uh, we, so we got together. And when we had this conversation over dinner, of course, it was outside. Um, there was a loud band that was playing. And I couldn't really hear a lot of the conversation. Um, but the piece of the conversation that I did hear was, um, I would say that there was like a lot of digs um, at me. I think there was a lot of sarcasm. And that kind of took me aback because that's not really my personality. I, I just really like to love and care and um, share. Uh, so that was really how the conversation was started with this other person that I was having dinner with. Um, and it really took me aback. But then I just realized, you know, this person is in a lot of physical pain. They just shared about how much physical pain they were in, how much their body was hurting. Um, and then there has been some family stuff that was going on. Uh, and so as I was kind of looking at what was happening with this person, I could pretty much sense that um, their number was below a five. And I have to say, going out to dinner and, you know, finally getting out to dinner and, you know, not being isolated, I was super excited to just be out to begin with. And then, so I would say, like, my number probably started at an eight, maybe even higher. And then as the conversation went on, um, if this was the other person, I have to say that my number started to slip. And I have to say, by the time I left, I was below a five. And that interaction, Oh, it was awful. I couldn't believe how bad it was. And um, that doesn't usually happen, but I just was picking up some icky energy and it just felt so awful. So, of course, um, you know, I like to love people and I like to help people and that did not feel good at all. Um, but I felt like what I wanted to do was really, um, you know, work this through uh, you know, not be too heavy about it, not, not psychoanalyze it, you know, again, sometimes, you know, when people connect with therapists, there's a little fear, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to psychoanalyze, I'm really just trying to have a good time, really just trying to um, figure out, sort out what happened. So, um, so anyway, one, one of the, the models that uh, Marsha Linehan talks about is, it's an acronym, and I, and I love it, it's PUVAS, P-U-V-A- S, PUVAS. And it's just a great way to remember how to be with people um, when you're having a conversation. So I'm just going to play that out a little bit and I'm going to just say what it is. So the P stands for pay attention fully to what the other person is saying. The U is understand completely what the other person is saying. The V is to validate the other person. Uh, I may have, oh yeah, and then A, that's right, so I'm doing this by memory, and then A is assert your reality, um, and S is make a shift. So um, I have to say, to be completely honest, I was not able to even think about that, or um, I don't know, it didn't occur to me. Uh, I left feeling pretty, pretty low. It was a pretty awful experience, I have to say. It wasn't at all what I expected. But um, the next morning, I felt like, oh, what just happened? I was really processing what was happening inside me, um, what might have been happening with this other person. And then I just realized, you know what? I, I really wanted to work that through again. So, um, so I did. So I, we started texting, and I just, um, you know, I text in the morning. You know, texting is always such a great way to connect with people, I think, sometimes if you're not able to have that face-to-face -face conversation so, you know, I just said, you know, uh, you know, I just talked about how the, you know, the band was great. Then, you know, I really enjoyed the music, but I wasn't able to hear what this other person was saying. So um, would love to do that again, you know, in a, in a little while. Maybe we can meet for sushi outside when it's cooler and we can have a conversation. Um, but I really felt like I wanted to let this other person know that I was really paying attention to what they were saying. And it wasn't that I wasn't interested it was just that um, the reality was the music was loud and I couldn't really hear a lot of what they were saying. Um, but I also know that they were struggling and they were going through a really hard time. And I wanted to 
validate that. So I, I did validate, you know, that I was sorry that they were feeling so much pain in their body, but it was great to see them. And it, and it was, it was great to see them. Um, and to just really understand where they were. So we were going back and forth with this dialogue. Um, and then, you know, just offering another opportunity to, Hey, let's, let's go out, you know, under better circumstances, let's have a conversation and let's really connect. So that made me feel a lot better. Um, so I just want to offer that to you, that those are some things that you can do in relationships um, and just be prepared. You know, uh, conversations with people are sometimes so complicated and if, especially a person that you haven't seen in a while, and that's okay. You know, we're all growing. We're all doing the best that we can. So I want to encourage you to, um, if you are a Christian, pray, invite the Lord in. Uh, if you're not a Christian and... Um, you would like to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to talk with you about how I follow the Lord and how, um, you know, how that just has helped me so much. He has so much love to give us. He never runs dry of his love. So I'll leave my uh, email in the comment section if you have any questions, uh, any, any concerns, any thoughts at all, any comments, I would love to hear from you. Um, but I just wanted to offer this to you to think about times when it is that you may uh, not want to go so much in your head and think so much, and you may want to do more of a behavior, which will then help to heal your emotion. Again, um, this, this is the shift a little bit in dialectical behavioral therapy that um, sometimes the focus is more on the behavior, changing the behavior, which will then change the inner. Um, it's really, you know, the word dialectical just really means to embrace both, um, bring both together. So it's really accepting what is and also making the changes. So um, there's been a lot of acronyms that um, Marsha Linehan has come up with, and you could even make your own. But there's uh, a couple of others that I'd like to share with you that I think you might find helpful that you might just want to put in your toolbox. Um, this is one that I, I talk about a lot with my clients that really helps them a lot to kind of go in that um, back door rather than to focus so much on processing the emotion. Um, and this acronym is TIP, T-I-P. So the T stands for temperature. Change your temperature. Um, when you're feeling activated, when you're feeling that you're, whew, all of a sudden your number dropped or something happened, see if you can go to the bathroom and wash your face with cold water. That will really help to shift your behavior. It will help you bring yourself more in the moment rather than wherever you wandered off with whatever was being activated. So T is changing your temperature by washing your face, washing your hands. It's always good to do in this uh, during this season of the pandemic anyway. Um, the second, the I, is uh, to do invasive exercise. And I know if you're out to dinner, it's kind of hard to do. Um, but if you're home, just think about it's really good to get that aerobic going. So the I is invasive exercise. And whatever way you can do that, um, for 20 minutes, just move your body, you know, move your arms and move your legs, put the dance music on, uh, jog in place, uh, whatever it is that you can do. But if you can do that aerobic activity for 20 minutes, you will also shift. That's a behavior that will help you to shift. And most likely when you go back to revisit what activated you or what triggered you, it's going to be far less um, intense. And then the P stands for paced breathing. And we've gone over this in the past. Um, you can look at some old videos that I've gone over this with, um, with you, but paced breathing is just really breathing slow, breathing deep. Um, when you can do that, you're in more of a restful place. You're activating the parasympathetic nervous system rather than the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight. So those are the three things. Um, change your temperature, invasive exercise, and paced breathing, slow and deep. And remember, you bring your lungs with you everywhere you go. So just breathe slow and deep, um, and you will find yourself being more present, more calm, and more peaceful. And you can do that without anyone even noticing. So the second acronym that she talks about is uh, ACCEPTS. And um, I'll go over this with you. The A stands for activities. 
and that's just getting involved in activities. So let's say you're going through a really difficult challenge. Um, you can focus on all these things and this will really help you focus on your behavior and then you'll shift um, your reaction to whatever it is that you're dealing with. So the A in accepts is activities. The C is contribute. Um, do something for someone else. Contribute to society, however big, however small that may be, um, but contribute. The second C is compa uh, comparisons. And look at how um, you are in this world compared to maybe someone else that doesn't have as much as you have. That's always helpful to be aware of how blessed you are by looking, comparing, comparing yourself to someone that doesn't have as much as you do. You can also compare yourself to um, a time when um, you didn't have as much as you have right now and how you got through that time. So that's another comparison. The E is um, just looking at your emotions, not a whole lot, not delving too deep, but simply seeing, like we talked about in last week's video on CBT, how you might be able to change your negative cognition, your negative thought, your negative emotion to a positive one. Just see, you know, just even the, oh, I'm just gonna smile right now, even though I'm feeling really sad, I'm gonna smile. Like even as I say that, it's kind of funny because I'm feeling the wiring. Um, wanting me to be happy um, just by having that smile. So there may be some ways that you can do that. Um, the P uh, in accept stands for push away just or putting the problem on a shelf. So let's say, let's say you have something that you were activated by or you have something going on later in the day that you're concerned about. You can just take that, kind of, I always like to say, wrap it up in bubble wrap and put it on a shelf and that will help you to focus on the other areas of your life. The T stands for thoughts, um, and you can do other thoughts. You know, I had a video where I just talked about, you know, getting uh, beads, and you can just say uh, words from other languages. Vene Sancte Spiritus, Vene Sancte Spiritus, or Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, or your own thoughts, or you can, um, do word problems or come up with a shopping list or do math problems, but something that is going to prevent you from thinking the same thought that has activated you. Um, and the S in accept stands for the five senses, and that's really taking the time to be in the moment and just focusing on your five senses, what you're smelling, what you're tasting, what you're touching, um, what you're feeling, what you're hearing, what you're seeing. Um, if you take the time to do that, to, to be mindful of each of your five senses, that's a really amazing way to help you to be fully present. So those are some um, things, uh, there's so much more that we could go over, but those are pretty much the highlights. Um, so I really encourage you as a homework assignment this week, that should you be triggered, should you be activated, um, I have to say there's not to be a, you know, a nervous Nelly or a Debbie Downer or whatever those expressions are, um, but there, I know for my life, there generally is usually something that's going to activate me, not, you know, on a high scale, you know, through the grace of God, it's a lower scale now, but there's usually something um, that will activate me a little bit. So. I just want to encourage you, if there is something that is going to activate you, something that is going to trigger you this week, I want to encourage you to uh, go in the side door or the back door and see if you can change your behavior, as this model recommends, before you actually go to the thought or the emotion. Um, it just It's a good way to practice putting this tool in your toolbox. Um, so I would love to hear from you. Um, and I would love to uh, know how that is for you. So please reach out to me. Um, so I'd like to end with some readings from the Bible. Um, as you know, I am a Christian and I love to soak in his word. Um, I like to talk a lot about um, love. I, I love this phrase. Um, and this, I feel like, comes from the Lord that um, we are either experiencing love for a person or we, we are experiencing fear. So 
when I'm picking up love from a person, that's really awesome. You know, that zero to 10 scale, they're probably in a higher number. Um, but when I'm picking up their fear, it doesn't mean that they're not loving. It just means that they're just in a fear place. And I notice for myself too, there are times where I'm really feeling a tremendous amount of love. And then there are times that I'm feeling more fear. So I like to look at that, you know, at that zero to 10 scale where 10 is probably the highest number of love and zero is it's probably more aligned with fear. So just kind of be aware of where you are on that scale, on that zero to 10 scale, 10 the best, zero the worst, 10 you're probably feeling a lot of love, zero you're probably feeling a tremendous amount of fear. But also when you're in relationship or like when I was with this friend at dinner, you know, picking up a lot of, you know, sarcasm, there was more fear energy. There was more below a five energy going on. Um, and I think if I was aware of that in that moment, it probably would have helped me to elicit um, and be more in a loving place. But just kind of be aware of that, that there are two forces in the world, love and fear. So when we're not picking up the love in someone, we're probably picking up their fear. And then the question is, what's the fear? What's the fear in them? And that can elicit much more compassion in us to be more loving. So I like to focus on um, John, the, the uh, Jahanian um, works in the Bible as it's referred to. Um, people often wonder if they're not familiar with reading the Bible, where is the best place to start? And it's also, it's often recommended that people start with the Johannian works, um, which is the Gospel of John, which was written much later than the first three synoptic Gospels, uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, so John is a great place to start. He's also considered to be the most loved um, apostle. Um, also his, his epistles, he has three epistles at the end of the Bible. Uh, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and he's also um, written Revelations. So Revelations is kind of more advanced reading, I would say, but I would say start with reading uh, the Gospel of John because there's so much love in there. Um, John talks more about how Jesus was, where the other synoptic Gospels talk more about what Jesus did. So it's just a really good um, starter point of really feeling who Jesus was, um, how he was, um, and how he is today. So I'd like to read three verses from uh, 1 John, actually two verses from 1 John and um, then a verse from John as a way of closing. Uh, so 1 John 4, 8 um, says, There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. I love that so much. I'm going to read it again. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. So the Lord's love is perfect for us, and we can call on his perfect love at all times. And just remember that when you're picking up fear in someone, just be in that place of love. Invite the Holy Spirit to be inside you in that place, in your, in your temple, and allow him to be that perfect love that cast out all fear. And in 1 John 4, 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. So I love to remember that God is love. Love is God. When I'm loving, I'm being like God. I'm inviting God, you know, the Father that made me, the Son that saved me, the Holy Spirit that lives within me. I'm inviting the Trinity inside me when I am being loving. Uh, I love that so much. And uh, John 15, 12, the Lord says, My commandment is this, love each other as I have loved you. So I thank you so much for joining today. Oh. I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.